Hello and welcome. It's a while since I've been on here on YouTube sharing a video and I'm here with this one because um, I was going to share it into my community. It's exactly, and it will be going into the community, because it's exactly the kind of thing that I might um, share about in there and get people's opinions of and perspectives on and hear their own experience of, because that's what really matters to me is, is whoever is in this exploration of who we are and to improving our experience of life through knowing who we really are, then what matters is that we are always checking in with our own experience, that we're never um, taking on blind faith what somebody else says, that we're never adopting somebody else's ideas or beliefs as our own, that we're always, always, always testing with our own experience. So this is an example of the kind of stuff that I would share about in order that um, the members in the, in the community membership get to to test that for themselves and say, well, how does this stack up in my experience? How do I see this in my experience? So this is one of those. And it's one that I really felt needed to come to a, to a wider audience. So, um, because, because it seems really, yeah, it seems really important to do that. So something that I'm known for is talking about the perfection of everything. There is one lady in particular who always makes me smile because we'll be talking and she'll say, um, she'll say, oh, well, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it's all perfect. <laughs> you always say it's all perfect. Uh, and genuinely, yes, because I really, really do see the perfection in all experience, in how everything is unfolding, in all the circumstances and um, conditions we find ourselves in. They are all there for a reason either to teach us a lesson about our psychological conditioning to help us break through that or to help us see something fresh about it, or it's here to point us back to the truth of who we are, to that most fundamental aspect of who we are. So I do see a perfection in everything and how everything is happening. And I also see a perfection in the whole design of this human experience from things like the fact that we always, um, if, we, if we are caught up in a thought storm, in a difficult time, in a turbulent time, we will always, always 100% return somehow, some way, come back into the experience of life. We'll always reach a breaking point. We'll always reach a return point. The system will always rebalance, guaranteed 100%. It was huge when I first saw that and realized that. And, and that's an example of the kind of perfection of this system how amazingly it's designed, how flawless it is in terms of showing us when we're identifying with something that's not who we really are, how the minute we attach or identify as something that's not fundamental to us, it hurts, we suffer, we feel the discomfort, the dis-ease, the pain, the fear of that. Perfect, 100% perfect. It's perfect and flawless in the fact that the world, the world, the content of, of the world, those who know my river metaphor, the downstream content of experience, will always 100% be reflecting back what's happening in our experience upstream, whether that's tangled and caught in whirlpools or whether it's flow, 100% of the time, guaranteed. So there are all these aspects of the exploration where I'm like, yeah, absolutely, perfect, 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 100% guaranteed, every single time, perfection. And then, yesterday, I was like, oh, is this a flaw of the system? Have I just discovered the exception to the rule that is the flaw to the human system and the human experience and all this incredible unfolding? And that potential flaw and I'm saying potential because I've done a bunch of thinking around it and I've come to a place where I, I think I'm saying, I think it's okay. I don't think it's a flaw, but I really want you to test this and check it for yourself and see what does it look like to you? So the thing that I saw as a potential flaw was the fact that when we are caught up, when we are in a whirlpool experience, when we are identified in the belief that we're a separate self and that it's all personal 
and it's all a problem and it's all about me or them and it shouldn't be like this and it should be different. When we're caught in all of that, perhaps feeling victim to our circumstances, it's not fair, it shouldn't be like that, they shouldn't be like that. I'm being excluded, I'm being left out, I should be included, I should be further ahead than this. I, I, I. When we're in that place, it's entirely common, familiar, me too, to retreat, to disengage, to go inwards. But not inwards in necessarily a healthy inquiry and exploration way. We go inwards in a, a shrinking, uh, oh, I'm really, I'm, <laughs> I'm really awful. I'm a really awful person. Nobody's going to want to see me like this. Nobody's going to want to engage with me like this. I'm a wretch. I'm a I'm a waste of space. I'm an abomination. I'm a I'm a failure. All these things that come up in our experience when we're caught up in all this mental and confused attachment to attachment and identification with what's not essential to us when we're in that space and it looks so personal and we do this shrinking and we go into victim and we retreat and we disengage this is what I'm questioning is this perfect or is this a flaw because in that retreat and shrinking and disengagement and this kind of unhealthy inwards movement where if we contrast that with healthy, where healthy would be exploring, well, who am I really? Or healthy would be exploring what's this narrative that's playing out and let me question that. There's that healthy version and this unhealthy, and I'm saying unhealthy because I don't truly believe it is, but let's put big inverted commas around that. So this retreat, this this shrinking, this victim, this disengagement this feeling that I don't belong I don't fit I'm not good enough I'm not capable enough I'm not lovable I'm not wanted I, I don't fit in I don't belong I don't have anything to bring here or give here when we're in that space and we do that retreat it's like we don't want to be talking to anybody we don't want to reach out so whether we have a, a coach or a guide or a support of some kind as an individual, or as it came apparent within the World Fig community, if it's within a community, this feeling that, well, I can't now engage with this person or these people because I'm such a wreck. I'm such a nightmare. I'm such a disaster. I'm such a failure. And so the very thing that could support us, the very person or people who could support us and help us move through that in that healthy way, we don't connect with because we think they won't want me. I'm I'm awful, I'm an awful person, I'm just terrible. I'm not sure I should even be here is also a thought that can entirely come up in that place. What's even the point? I might as well just give up. Full discouragement and yeah, what's the point? What is the point? What am I even doing? So in that space of that shrinking, the very thing, the very people that could help us, we disconnect from, we disengage from. And this was the thing that I thought, huh, is this a flaw of the system? In all this perfect system that I genuinely see works and unfolds so perfectly, so beautifully. And yet there's this one bit where it's like, well, that doesn't seem to make sense. That doesn't seem to fit with the perfection of this system, that in the very moment when we most need somebody to help us in a healthy exploration, that's the point at which we disconnect and disengage. But something in me just was like, just doesn't feel right. It, it, given that all the rest of it seems so perfect and so impeccably designed, why would there be this one flaw why would there be this one aspect which which isn't perfect, which isn't an impeccable part of the design? 
it got me questioning. It's like, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel in integrity with the rest of everything I know. And so what occurred to me was actually really helped by um, a client I was talking to yesterday, who's also a member of the community, and who said, do you know what? This community is the thing that stops me drowning. This community is the backbone. It's the lifeline. It's the thing that stops me drowning. And in that moment, I was like, huh. But sometimes drowning can be a really helpful thing, metaphorically. Sometimes when we are really brought to our knees, when there really is no knowing of the way through an experience, life brings us to our knees. And in that, the mind gives up. It's like all past reference material is completely irrelevant because there is nothing left in the filing cabinet to bring to this circumstance. So the mind has completely left the building. It's like, I got nothing. And so in that moment of complete devastation and complete giving up, in complete drowning, the mind disappears. It's out of there. It has nothing to bring to this situation. And in that, we then feel the fullness and beauty and wholeness of who we really are. Because absent of, of mind content or identification with it, all that's left is the feeling of who we are. And in those very extreme moments, the mind and all that content is so instantaneously obliterated from our experience that the fullness of who we are is felt so completely that it has a tr hugely transformative impact on the individual. These are the times when, you know, people have these huge breakthroughs, like Eckhart Tolle had. I know many who've had much more normal kinds of breakthrough experiences like this, where there is nothing the mind can bring to the circumstance. You know, family tragedies and challenging circumstances and and there's nothing, the mind's got nothing. And they have had these beautiful opening, awakening experiences because in the absence of all the content, that's all that remains. And so then I'm like, well, therefore, this shrinking and retreating and being in a space where you feel so utterly helpless and alone and useless and rubbish actually could be an incredible part of the design. Because if we continue in that, and if we don't reach for help, then we may well reach one of those rock bottom moments. We, it, to a greater or lesser extent, we don't always have to be at the extent of Eckhart Tolle, but we can reach then a rock bottom moment where we there's a giving up of the mind. Again, that all that thought content is out of the building. It's like I, I got nothing left to give. I've got no reference material. I've got no information for you. I've got no how to's for you. And so in in smaller and greater moments, when we reach that rock bottom, the mind's out of there, we feel, we feel the truth of who we are. We feel the peacefulness and the love and the transformative impact of who we are. And so, yeah, so then that, that had me go, yeah, so it's actually, it's actually perfect that in challenging times, we might retreat and shrink and go down and down and down into that whirlpool deeper and deeper and deeper because given that 100% guaranteed we will always come back up, at some point we will reach that point of return. We will reach that point of breakthrough, that point of everything falling away and realisation, recognition happening of first the who we are, who we really are in the absence of all that content. And then will come great feelings, opportunities, possibilities, new leases of life, new directions to travel. So what I want to be really clear about is this doesn't mean the only way is to reach a rock bottom. What I see with it 
is that all of the options are available. So that when we're in that retreat, shrinking, I'm not good enough phase, we may well at some point reach a, reach a, reach a mini rock bottom where we do reach out for help from an individual or from a community. We may reach a bigger rock bottom where everything really does collapse and we're left with the beautiful transformative feeling of ourself and everything in between, everything in between. So to me, it's now not looking like a floor of the system that we might retreat and retreat and retreat and shrink and shrink and shrink because actually we can only do that for a certain amount of time. We're not designed, that's not who we are. That can't be maintained. That's a lot of effort in the system to have to have ourselves believe we are this small and this incapable and this rubbish because that's so in opposition to the truth of who we are that that can't be maintained. It will always come back. The question is how and when. And that's the bit that we have no knowing of. We don't know how and when that will happen. All we know is it happens. And it will happen in the only way that makes sense for you in the moment that you're in. So I'd love to hear your perspectives on this and and your questions and your wonderings as to whether this, this retreating and this shrinking and this disconnection and disengagement really is a floor of the system because it's potentially the very moment when we should be reaching out and connecting and being in contact with people who can support and help us in a healthier exploration. Or is it actually still part of the perfect design? Because it leads to the possibility of us reaching some level of rock bottom and therefore having a breakthrough of some kind. And, it, and God, they're beautiful too. So I'd love, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what your perspective is on this and what your personal experience is of this. Have you also had all of this? Have you had these rock bottom moments when you felt like completely giving up, like it was all pointless and hopeless and you were hopeless? And did that lead to a new and fresh movement happening on the other side? Did it lead to some kind of transformation? Did it give you a glimpse of that beauty of who you really are? And have you also had the experience of the shrinking and the and the pulling back and then finding the beauty of asking for help, of sharing your experience and that becoming an unlocking and a breakthrough and a movement forward? Is it in fact the truth that both are available and no doubt many others in between. And that all that we know is that, we'll, that one or other will happen. All we know is that there will always be that return. And that the shrinking and the shrinking and the shrinking, if that's what's happening, then that's what's happening. If that includes complete disengagement, then that's what's happening. Leading to either, either that rock bottom or to reaching out. Tell me, tell me what you think. I would love to hear what you think, what your experience has been like. Is this a flaw? Is this part of the perfection? What's your perspective? What's your opinion? I look forward to hearing. Lots of love.